Hello and welcome to this AE Basics tutorial in which we're carrying on looking at expression controllers so that we can have all the controls for this animation that we're doing rather than delving through the timeline and, and trying to find out where things are we're moving the important ones right up here. The next one just before we do colour I actually want to do scale for my man and that is actually if we think about it it's going to be under the group and it's going to be under the transforms for the group which are going to scale the actual size of the man himself okay so I'm just going to right click that one and reset it and I want to have a controller for this and I'm going to do that one with a point control and you'll see why in a minute if I go to effects expression controls and I actually go to a point control you'll see that a point control has got two values and you'll see down here that my scale also has two values there locked together but I can unlock them if I want to so that I can make things wider or smaller if I unlock them and move things for instance I can make my man fatter or taller or thinner whatever I want to do I don't even need to unlock them here actually in fact, let's just reset those to the 100 default what I'm going to do is I'm going to alt click again on scale and I'm going to do open square bracket because I want to separate X from Y so I want the first value of this point controller to do X and the second one to do Y. So what I can do is simply take the pick whip and drag it up to X, let go, comma. So I'm saying that the first property, because I had my open square bracket, if you remember, that's saying I'm doing an array, which splits X and Y out. So the first property is going to be controlled by this one, which at the moment is 960, which is pretty intense. It's going to look very tall when we've done it. So comma, so now we're going to look at the second property, which is 100. It's going to go mad when I finish this, by the way, because these are very high values, but we can reset those in a second. I can take this up and drag it to where it says 540, let go, close square bracket and enter, and you'll see they'll scale massively. But all we need to do is just click in here 100 and 100. And then I can animate those separately if I want to. Alternatively, I could have split them up into two sliders. So I've got the opportunity to change the size of these. And as I scale them up or down, you might think, oh, well, the distance is all wrong now. But bear in mind, we've actually got the across and down. So if I start to pull them across, I can pull them a lot closer. And down, I can actually pull them a lot nearer. Because we've, it's number, sorry. So let's do, and down, that position, so we can pull them a lot closer. So you can see you can actually control them all even when you've done scale. So let's just change the name of this to scale or man scale in fact. Let's do man scale and then we know what we've done. A point controller can control the X and Y position. So if something actually has an X and Y position you wouldn't need to do it in the same way that I've done it here. You could just do a point controller and all click where it says position and click and drag to point and then both of those would have been linked. Okay. Now, we've done all of that with these items. Now let's have a little think about what happens if our customer wants colors to change for the man. So let's say we want to be able to control the color for all these different men and maybe even add a stroke, because you'll see at the moment there's no stroke added. I'm going to choose the ellipse, which is actually the head of this man. You can see that's the ellipse there. And if I choose add, I can actually go to fill and you'll see immediately I've got a red fill. Okay, so the man has now got a red fill. And I might want to be able to control that fill. So if I open up the fill, you'll see there's the colour. And I can change it to any colour I want here. But also, if I go to Effects, Expression Controls, I've got a colour control. There's the colour control. And I can Alt-click down here on this colour control. So Alt-click here. And then I can take the Pick Whip up to this where it says Colour Control. And then hit Enter. And then whatever colour I change here, you'll see that it updates with the man. So let's just do this to man colour. But clearly that's just doing the head. So how do I make this move to all the other ones? What I can do is I can take where it says fill to, this one that we've now controlled with an expression, and copy it. So control C. And then I can go through all the other items. Now if I do control V, hmm, nothing's happened. But actually, I can do this. I'm just going to go through all of them and control V. And then I'm going to open them up one at a time. So if I open it up, you'll see that there's two fills. There's the original fill and there's the new fill. And if you take one and drag it below the other, you'll see that we have actually got the fill in there. 
and it is going to be controllable and all you need to do is go down and move these fills through and bit by bit you're going to control the overall colour of the man. Of course you can leave one bit one colour and move the other bit to the other colour depending on how you want to work. So I'm just move through now, let's just do the last one which is the, the body itself. Pull it down, let go. Now the man's colour is completely controlled by this single expression controller. So if the customer turns around and says, you know what, it should have been orange, well there it go, it's orange. Now the other thing that we can do is we can actually add a stroke to the whole group. So let's just select the man at the top and go add and let's go to stroke okay now there's a stroke around the whole of the man but I want it before the repeater okay so I want to pull it up above the two repeaters and now I've got a stroke around the man so let's just open up the stroke and choose a color or let's make it a little bit bigger so if I make it bigger you'll see that the stroke is actually affecting everything this stroke is now above the repeaters but below all my shapes so you see there are all my shapes there's the stroke and it's above my repeaters but if I want to control it up here again I just need another effect just another, another color control the last effect you use is always done at the top here and then I can change the color simply by again alt clicking the color here and then taking that up to the color here and then when I change the color here you'll see that it's going to affect everything so let's go for a nice blue stroke okay so it's now a stroke that's affecting everything and I'm going to hit that and call it stroke color but I also want to control the size of the stroke you see down here we've got stroke width so to do that I'm going to have another slider so I can go to effect expression controls out to the slider and I can hit that and call it stroke width and then go down to where it says stroke width down here select it take the pick width up to the slider hit enter and now I can actually control the size of the stroke and you'll see it went to zero but you can to pull it out to whatever value you want it to be so now all of my controls for this particular layer are controlled right from the layer itself with all the different expression controllers I've added and that doesn't stop me adding more so for instance if I want to go down to say the transforms for the layer so if I look at the transforms for the layer, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to say, let's move the anchor points. The anchor points in the middle here. Let's move it to the top left, which we do with the standard pan behind tool. Grab hold of the item, take it up to the top left like that. So that's now controlled. And once I've done that, if I scale, you'll see that it's going to scale in and out from that point, which is incredibly useful. So if I want that control up here, what I can do again is add effect. I'm going to choose another slider. Hit enter for the slider and call it layer scale and then alt click scale here and drag it up to this slider here and then scale is controlled by this control and you can see down here red it's not going to be controlled by what's down here but what we do up here okay so all of that is controlled now by my different expression controls and of course the important thing is every single one of these is animatable they've all got stopwatches in fact the only expression control that doesn't have a stopwatch is the one that says layer control and things so you can actually add that in but you can't animate it but you can animate check boxes turning things on and off we've got angle we've looked at 3d position so moving an item up and down side to side and in and out in the 3d layer ordinary point controls which is just x and y and then the other bits and pieces we've pretty much looked at so those are expression controls which now allow me to get in and do whatever animations I want right up here in my effects controls and play around with the item as much as I like, change its colour, everything's going to be affected together. As soon as I do anything, get in there and make the item look completely different by simply clicking and dragging right up here in the, uh, in the effects controls which is a really powerful way of working, even changing the size of the stroke. So that's the basics of expression controls. As I said in the last tutorial, if you've got multiple layers that you want to control, rather than having these on the layer, you would create a new null object, which you would rename as your controller layer. So controller, and all of your controls would be on that layer and not on this layer. Well, I hope you found this tutorial useful, that you'll start to use these expression controllers in your own projects. Remember that if you do have a controller layer you can control anything on any layer as long as you link it to an expression control that you've put on the controller layer. 
you can just add them in the normal way effects expression controllers and any of the ones that we've got here the only one as I say that doesn't have animation is the layer control so all of these can be used to create some brilliant effects which you can then put on the controller layer turn the eyeball off you don't even need to see it and then as many layers as you've got can all be controlled from a single layer and when your customer says I like it but you've already got everything linked up and then you can make the changes super fast because everything's linked up with expression controls and your customer will be very impressed I hope you found these tutorials useful my name's Andrew Davis, and thank you for watching.